The first thing that we see when we open our anthology is the author's name, Lord Byron. So from that we can immediately tell that he was someone incredibly wealthy and he had a very high status as a lord. Um, as a character himself, he was actually known as someone very flamboyant and scandalous, so essentially he was very extra and he had lots of affairs. This poem was actually about one of his many affairs. The subject of this poem was thought to be Lady Frances, who in the end ended up leaving Lord Byron for what she deemed a better affair. He was known for his proud nature, and this is supported by events such as his own self-imposed exile from England, and it was also rumoured that at one point he had a bear as a pet at university. That's definitely all representative of materialism and his flashy nature. Okay, so the themes of this poem. We see a lot of denial within When We Two Parted, which we can link to his pride. Um, exam an example of this would be the grammatical anachronisms. So in simpler terms, he uses outdated language, including thy and thee, which if we look at Oxford's use over time charts, we can see that kind of archaic language falling significantly out of fashion from the 19th century onwards. We can see from this really formal address that Byron is trying to distance himself from the affair because really, he isn't meant to feel heartbroken about something that wasn't even a true relationship, especially as a man in that time. We can also see links to the idea of the relationship not being quite real in both the language and the structure. So, for example, if you read the first line and exaggerate the syllables, you'll notice it has 10 syllables, which is something very typical of sonnets. When We Two Parted also has a very specific rhyme scheme, which again is a feature of a sonnet, a typical sonnet. Yeah, sonnets are 14 lines long, and this poem is 32 lines long in total, which is a huge extension of 18 lines. And when we're actually analysing the structure, we need to be able to explain what it's symbolic of. Now, there are many interpretations. Most of his lines actually have multiple juxtaposing interpretations, which we can link as well to the fact that Lord Byron was quite a juxtaposing character in himself, being celebrated yet hated by many people for his scandals. We can interpret the likeness of the poem with a sonnet to be representative of the fact that they had a romance but not a real relationship. This was a sonnet-like poem but not quite a real sonnet in the same way. We can say that he wants the relationship to carry on despite the fact it's supposed to end and argue that the structure completely represents that. The narrator of this poem, who we believe to be Byron himself, can be seen as incredibly obsessive. He quite literally won't let go at the end of the poem, the same way he won't let go of Lady Frances. He expected even, to quote line 30, that he would meet her after long years. And we can also see that same juxtaposition within the lines silence and tears because it's representing his emotions being really confused. There's a lot of evidence for, of Lord Byron saying that this relationship was a messy affair. Take, for instance, the line half broken hearted. So there are countless interpretations actually just for that line alone. So why just half broken? Perhaps it was just because it was him hurting and she was really happy for that relationship to end. It was her decision. We could say again that it was representative of the fact that it wasn't a real relationship and it was one that they had to keep silent. And the final interpretation that I came up with was actually representative of the fact that half of him was sad while the other half of him was angry. This is clear from the lexical or semantic field of death and threat within the poem. Hearted, cold, pale, sever, sorrow. When we read this poem, it feels a lot like we're watching Byron grieve Lady Frances. He says it almost as though she's dead. Mention of a knell, which is a funeral bell, is evidence for this grief. It's also worth mentioning that denial and anger are known to be the first stages of grief, both of which we see within this text. The cyclical structure is also symbolic of this denial too. He hasn't actually reached that acceptance yet. And everything about the structure is intentional too. He would have intended for the rhyme scheme to be alternate, which means like the ABAB -A -B rhyme. And it's also symbolic of them as a couple. The rhyme is in pairs, um, though we can see that there's uh, between every pair of A's, there's a B separating it. And this could actually be representative of the fact that it's an affair separating them or the new lover of Lady Frances separating them as a couple. We can argue that this is the case and that there are other interpretations for the meaning of this rhyme scheme too, such as Byron has a lot of alternating or juxtaposing traits as a person himself and confused emotions. We can say this poem is a very accurate representation of his character and personality. We can do a lot of psychoanalysis just by imagining how these lines link to his mental state, emotion and decision making, though not forgetting to focus on the language so it's balanced. We can also discuss this poem through a feminist lens. Realistically, the threatening language is all because he feels hurt and emasculated by being left by a woman for another man. Um, he also acts being, as a higher class man of the time, very entitled. 
To him, it's almost an expectation that he will be with her in the end, and her feelings aren't actually ever considered. Also, as a concluding note, when we argue these sorts of points, we must integrate quotes stating the work class and the effect to support any lens-based observations, because otherwise there's no language analysis. Okay, bye now. <laughs>